You tell me which ones are the real ones. I'm just gonna back away and you tell me which ones are the actual real Guggen baits. That's all this took was 30 bucks and a bunch of used soft plastics out of that bin. Got him. Awesome little fish on the fake, the remake Dragon Drop. Yep, it's fish. That is on the, the fake Guggen Squad Slim Shake, as I call it, the Slim Shake remake. <laughs> there you go. Yep, jokes are corny, but they're free, so. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Bee Fishing. I've got one today that's probably gonna get me in trouble. Like, I'm probably gonna get a little bit reprimanded um, by one of the sponsors, but this is good content. It's stuff that you guys have, I think one of y'all have requested it, but it's something I've always wanted to do, um, and I'm gonna show you how to do it and the baits you can do it with. But what we're gonna be doing is copying baits. So if you want to remelt your own plastics and put them in a bait that you know works, a bait that you like, you can do that and I'm gonna show you how. The baits that we're really going to copy today, this is where I'm gonna get in trouble, are these Guggen baits. We're gonna make a copy, a carbon copy of these baits. We've got the Slim Shake and then I've got the Drag and Drop. Those are the two baits, and those are prime candidates for what we're doing. We are going to make our own silicone mold. The best baits to use for making your own poor silicone mold are a bait that is flat on the bottom. See how those Guggen Slim Shakes are flat on the bottom? The Dragon Drops are also flat. Other decent candidates for this would be like a Zoom Trick Worm, because again, the bottom is flat, so it just lays perfectly flat. You kind of get into a little bit of a gray area because the body has a little bit of flatness, but it's a little round right there on the U-tail worms. The zoom, but I think you could pull it off. A boot tail swim bait because it's flat on top. You just flip it upside down like that. It's a good candidate. A bad candidate. Any bait like this. It's round. Really can't do a poor mold with a round bait. So this is not a good candidate. Although I wish it was. This is like a rage a rage crawl in a Okeechobee. We're gonna make our own pour molds, silicone pour molds, and uh, we're gonna be able to recreate any of these baits uh, ourselves. So that's what we're gonna do. Then we're gonna go fish with them. We're gonna see if we can't catch a couple fish on our baits that we made. So if you're sponsoring this channel like a Shop Carl's, please forgive me. But this is something you can literally do. The big thing is, is it's totally illegal if you try to sell them. So do not make this and try to resell these baits. You can't do that. Um, but all this stuff is open on the market. You can do this at home relatively cheap. I'm gonna leave a link in the description where I bought all this stuff, so let's get to it. First, we need a box. So I'm gonna take this box, I'm gonna cut it down to size. A Slim Shake Worm is about seven inches long, so I'm going to uh, make the box about eight inches and, uh, in length, and then we're gonna cut down the width a little bit. So let me get a box cutter and cut this box up. 10 inches. So I really need to cut it down two inches. All right. Let's tape this box up. Now that we've cut it down to size, I'm just gonna use some tape. Start taping it up. It doesn't have to be perfect just yet. I'll show you what I mean here in a minute. Now that that's all taped up, we're gonna tape up the inside pretty good. We're gonna put these worms to the side. Set those to the side and let's get this box like taped up like for sure, for sure good. And what I mean by that is like let's get the inside seams all nice and taped up. Alright, so what I've done is I've actually thrown tape around that bottom edge. Hopefully y'all can see that. Just lift it right here, and I'm going to bend all of it in, and we're just going to literally tape it 
all together very gently like on my workbench. We're gonna work it as flat as we can. I'm sure there's an easier way to do this. It's just this is the way that makes sense to me. So there's probably a lot of guys that do open pour molds that or make their own open pour molds that are just screaming at the screen right now. And uh, to those guys, I'm sorry. All right, I think that's pretty good. And I think I'm sealed up pretty good. All right, so there's what it looks like now. Got just like a little edge in there. And now we're gonna pour the thing. All right, so let's uh, lay all of our baits out in here and I'll show you what that looks like when I'm done. I'm wanting flat and straight, but you need to make sure they've got really good bottom contact. Cause you don't want this silicone we're about to pour in here to uh, go under them. That's what we're working with. That's what I want it to look like. None of them are really caught too far to the side. I made sure they're pressed down really good. They're not gonna move. Now we need to mix that stuff up and dump it in here on top of them. Now this is supposed to be 50-50 mixture. I don't think that's gonna be plenty. The pink, what is that? Like one cup is what I put in there? Right around one cup. There's that, like equal parts of each. We're gonna stir this crap together. I'm gonna turn purple. We still got a little pink on the outside. Make sure we get all that together. It's gonna turn purple. It's just fast curing. So, you know, you don't wanna be taking your time with it, basically. You wanna do what you gotta do and move on. It definitely ain't pink anymore and it definitely ain't blue, so I think we're ready. Now you're gonna get air bubbles in there. You kinda wanna work those out. You don't want too many air bubbles in this thing. If you had a degassing chamber, this would be the time to use it. But we're just gonna... And we kinda need to go, so... We're just gonna very gently pour this over everything. If I can get y'all a better view. You can see the air bubbles. Those air bubbles should work themselves to the surface as I'm pouring this. And we ought to be okay. All right, that's pretty much the deal. Here's the good news though. We had enough. But it should cure pretty quickly. I'm very excited to see what this turns out. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to make our own Guggen baits after this. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it has been six hours. As you can see, the stuff that's actually in the cup, it uh, just peels right off. So if you're wondering how to clean this stuff up, just wait and uh, it comes right up. So I'm going to sit y'all over here you know, we're gonna start pulling this thing apart. See, it's already separating there. All right, let's uh, get rid of our box here, basically. That's my goal, that's where I wanna start. We ought to just be able to lift this thing up. Okay, so we had a little bit, that's what I was worried about. So as you can see, we had a little bit go around it. Again, not a problem. I'll show you how we're gonna get fixed that. But the easiest way to do this is to actually take super glue and super glue the baits down so the stuff can't get underneath it. Again, not a big deal. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my razor blade. I'm just gonna cut into the cavity and open it up. This by far was the worst one. This one may not be usable. So this one, this part right here will not be usable. I'll probably fill that in just so I, I know not to use it. Because what ended up happening is when it, when the mold filled up around it, this head floated up. Um, I'm not, not sure if it's got air in it or something, but the head floated up with the head floating up. That's gonna be way too deep um, 
of a uh, the the bait's going to be huge on the top is basically what I'm saying, and we that we don't want that. So let me pull these other ones out, clean them up. Again, this is why super glue would have been really like a really big deal if I would have used super glue. Um, we wouldn't have had this issue. That one's not usable, as you can see. It went it went pretty deep in there. That one did. I mean, it's you can kind of feel it right there. So that one is not usable. We've got two slim shakes that are usable and three drag and drops that are usable. And uh, now all we got to do is pour them up. I mean, these things look pretty solid. Hey folks, I've got some old remelt here. Just some like it's kind of like green pumpkin with just a bunch of different color flake. And I've got my white. So we're gonna take this remelt. We're gonna see if we can't make our own Guggen baits. Waiting on that to go, I'm actually gonna cut out this part that is unusable. It's like that, we, we do not need that piece. Don't need that piece anymore. Here we go. And we're going all brown on these. Didn't mean to do that. So the dragon drops are pretty difficult because of the tail. You've really got to get past that cavity. It doesn't want to feed itself through to the other side. I just messed up right there. That one's a pretty good one. Uh, but the tails are the toughest on the uh, dragon drops. Those might be an issue, but I mean, again, we just trim them and then they're, they're good to go. I've, I've already poured a couple and I forgot to hit the record button and show you how to take these out and trim them up. So I intentionally on this run poured a bad, um, didn't really pour it right. I got a lot, a lot of overlap because, hey, that's going to happen. First thing you want to do when you have overlap, especially if they're connecting like these two Slim Shakes, go ahead, take a razor blade and cut them separate because you're going to pull them up separate. You don't want them hanging on each other and stretching. Just make sure they're all disconnected. So that's number one. Then you're just going to easily, like I just like bend in the mold a little bit. You just pop them out and pull them. Be real gentle. You want to give them plenty of time to cure um, in there. You don't want to pull them out whether, you know, they're still super hot and uh, where they can get some stretch. We're going to pull some of these out real quick and I'm going to trim these up and then I'll show you the finished product of how many I've actually got done over here. Lay these straight, as straight as you can and take you a straight edge razor and you're literally just gonna follow the edge. I like just going straight and pressing down. You're just gonna follow the edge of the bait and you're just gonna trim them up. Like, there you go. All that excess that was on it, we just trimmed it up and now we have a perfectly good Slim Shake. Our own Slim Shake worms. I'm gonna do that to the rest of these real quick and uh, let's, let's show you the finished product. All right, here's your side-by-side -side comparison. You tell me which ones are the real ones. I'm just gonna back away and you tell me which ones are the actual real Guggen baits. These three, one, two, three, are the real ones. These are my fakes. Can you really tell the difference though? These two over here are the real ones. The rest of these are mine that I just poured with that mold right there. So again, we're going to take these to the water. We're going to fish with them. But this is a super simple project, folks. There's really nothing to this. The main part you need to be careful of in just throwing this out there is a, a blanket statement. Number one, safety first. Wear all the protective gear you need if you're going to mess with this hot plastic, okay? And, you know, wear your mask, wear your gloves, because it's it's the the... To melt this plastic, you need to get it up to about 350 is what you need to be pouring it at. Um, to actually melt it, it takes around 300, but 350 is what you need to be pouring it at. Um, this stuff right here, I got off Amazon and I'm gonna link it below. Um, it was like 30 bucks, okay? That's all this took was 30 bucks and a bunch of used soft plastics out of that bin and a couple Guggen baits that I copied. So there's nothing bad about this. You can do this at home. 
But if you try to sell these baits, if you go out and make your own Guggen baits and try to sell them as your own, then you got legal problems. But everything I did, you can get at any store. You can actually go to Hobby Lobby or Michael's and get this silicone rubber stuff, okay? There's nothing special about it. This has been happening in the bait making industry for a long time where you make your own open pours. Um, and with that said, if y'all wanna see me do my own where I design my own bait out of clay, like maybe a swim bait or a worm or something, I design my own bait, put it in a silicone mold like this and pour it and then go catch a fish, go ahead, hit the thumbs up on this video and leave me a comment below and if you wanna see that as well. Um, I'm pretty excited about it. We're gonna go hit the water, see if we can't catch some fish on these. And uh, I think I'm in business with my own dragon drops now because I go through dragon drops like crazy. So let's go, let's go get the water. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here for two fish and two fish only. So uh, let's get on a few fish, shall we? I've got three rigs behind me. I've got one Texas rig, a shaky head rig, and of course, a drop shot rig. All right, so let's start. I think we start with the drag and drop just because I think we can knock it out really quick. Just add insult to injury. We're gonna use a shop Carl's box to store all of this stuff. And there's the actual Guggen baits in their packs. And these are the ones I made. Uh, Let's start off with this little guy. He looks good enough. A nice little homemade drag and drop in its assortment of glitter colors. That might be a fish that's on bottom. Can't see my line. I think my line's moving. Yeah, my line's moving. Got him. Got him. Pretty good sized fish. It's a nice sized fish. He's not tagged. He could have been one I put in here just recently. Awesome little fish on the fake, the remake, drag and drop. Oh yeah, he's good. There he goes, right back to the bottom, right where we caught him. Let's move on. Let's go shaky head, as opposed to Texas rig. We're gonna try tossing the shaky head around just for a minute. We're gonna do shaky head on the slim shake it's a slim shake like shaky head so again it's the same color as the dragon drop we just had because they were poured from the same exact batch get all the excess plastic off that just happens when you make baits not sure how well this is going to work only because it's such a long worm and some of these fish in here just aren't huge so they're really going to have to they're really gonna have to commit to getting it. You know what I mean? Uh, and if we get bit a couple times and they don't take it, we'll switch to a Texas rig with a bigger hook just to get it further down on the tail. That may be a fish. Yep, it's fish. Got him on the slim shake. Got him. Didn't have to let him play that long, and that, that really did not take that long. It's a nice little size fish. He's at least a pound, for sure at least a pound. He's thick. All right, guys, there you go. Those two done. That is on the, the fake Guggen Squad Slim Shake, or as I call it, the Slim Shake Remake. <laughs> there you go. Yep, jokes are corny, but they're free, so it's not like you paid for them. Thanks, buddy. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's video on the imposter. Guggen bait worms. My two little slim shakes and well actually, you know, I made more than that but in this hand I've got two little slim shakes, one with a white belly, one with not and then I've also got the dragon drops the same way. All we did was fish with the normal like just pumpkin glitter mix basically is what this was, is that we were catching them on. It was just a bunch of remelted brown and green baits that I just remelted, threw them in those molds. Uh, if you guys liked this video, like this type of content, I really need y'all to let me know in the comments, also by sl smashing the like button. If y'all get in the comments, let me know y'all want to see more of this type of stuff, maybe where I make 
you know, I design my own out of clay, make a mold of it, pour it up, come out here and catch some fish on it. I can do that too. I've got more of that silicone coming. And again, if you want to purchase your own, I'm leaving a link in the description so you can do this all yourself as well. We just had something massive splash and eat something else. So fun to watch. It really is so fun to watch. But I'll leave all that in the description. It's just, I got it off Amazon. It was like $28, $29, 30 something with, with tax and everything. I mean, really not bad for as many baits as I'm gonna get. And again, all you have to do is buy a, like a Pyrex cup, a glass cup, warm them up. All your old baits that you just save the stuff, warm it up, dump them in. It's that easy. You can keep producing your own baits. You don't have to have the special injectors or the injection molds like I've got. You can literally make your own if it's got a flat bottom. But as always, hit the like button. Leave that comment below and if you want to see this stuff more in the future. And if you haven't already, join the BFF, the Bee Fishing Fam, uh, by hitting that red subscribe button. Turn it gray. Hit the ding dong notifications so you'll be notified anytime I drop a new video. And uh, yeah, that's gonna do it for today's video. I really enjoyed it. And plus, now I've got my own molds so I can make my own Slim Shakes and on drag and drops. Save a little bit of cash, if you know what I mean. You guys take it easy. I'll catch you on the next one. Later. Later.